Welcome. Imagine picking two images, describing what you want to happen between them, and watching AI create a seamless, mind-blowing transition between those images. This is the future of content creation. From before and after transformations, emerging collaborations with images, the possibilities are endless. Let's explore how Kling AI's Frames feature can totally change your content game. I am Dr. Mayo with BizCrowd Media here to show you how to use Frames, this wonderful image to video feature on Kling AI. That's every content creator's dream, whether you're a marketer, or a musician, an advertiser, or a small business owner. This gives you so much power when it comes to creating videos with your content. Now, why is this tool a game changer? Think about it as a content creator. Now you can merge two images into a video that grabs attention. Maybe your two highest performing images, you could actually merge it into a video. Do you know how engaging that's going to be? Because they've shown results before and then you merge them together. For a marketer, for an advertiser, you could showcase transformations between products in a cool way as opposed to just the before and after. Like imagine skincare where the before image is backwards and then the new image, the after image is as they're walking towards you. Or think about it for musicians, two artists that have never met can actually promote a single they've done together by merging two of their images. The big picture here is that years ago, we couldn't do this. It would take a whole lot to attain this level of content creation. But what I'm going to do is actually show you here how you can do that in Kling AI in a creative way using the frames feature under their image to video feature. So you could start creating absolutely terrific content. Let's dive in. All right, here we are logged into Kling AI, a totally wonderful next generation AI creative studios, what they call it, spark your imagination. And it's totally doing that. I could tell you that it's one of the great phenomenal video AI tools that I've seen there. Now you want to make sure that you log in, you create an account and then you get your certain amount of credits. And if you are a pro member, if you have a subscription that you're paying for, of course you get more credits, but even as a free member, you do have some credits that you could use to kick it off right away. Now, when you're logged in, of course, you see the AI images, AI videos, effects, and you could see examples, tons of examples that they have here just to let you know how it works. And since we are planning to do a video, of course, you're going to go to AI videos, which is right here in the middle. Or if this is not the dashboard that you're seeing for some reason or the other, you could go to the menu, the left here, which just says AI videos. Now, when you click AI videos, you get to see this dashboard here where on the left, it says frames, elements and effects. And as you can see, it automatically defaults here to elements. What we are going to focus on in this tutorial is the frames feature. Now, as you can see, when you're logged in here, you get the opportunity to be able to upload your image here. You could drag, drop, click and upload, and it goes in there. You see the hint option here where, where you click on it, it kind of lets you add an image to a start. And then of course you can add an end frame as well if you want. And then in this instance, if you were to generate it, it would do a transition between these images. But here's the thing again, these are the hints. So if you do use this, you will be using your credits if you click generate. So the most important thing that you want to do is make sure you are uploading your images. So what I'm going to do here is upload the two images that I want to blend in together for a meaningful video. Let me see how it's going to work, right? And so that's what we'll do here. And so I'll simply go to delete these. This is how you could simply delete it by clicking the trash button there. And then we will add the images that I want, the two images that I want to be able to have a transition with this AI tool. So the first image is going to be of me over here. And as you can see, I just dragged and dropped it. And so this is going to be the start image of me just simply being the start frame. Now I'm going to choose the end frame and it's the same 
process. I simply look for my image and drag it in there again. So as you can see now, I have both frames that I want the transitions to happen between. So this is me just being maybe like at a conference and talking to some people. And then, hey, let's say I am just marketing the fact that at that conference, I'm going to train, right? Well, maybe I can create a smooth transition here. And that's the whole goal. Now, as you can see, you have the opportunity to give a prompt here. And that's very important because when it comes to AI, prompting is probably one of the most important factors in creating content that actually has the output that you want. And you'll be so surprised that it takes a whole lot to be able to get there because you want to be specific as possible. So here you have the opportunity to put a prompt in. You could also do a motion brush, but this is not available with the end frame. And then you have more settings here, the creativity and the relevance. I tend to always go more to high on the relevance. And it does say it that I'm choosing 0 0.85 here. A relatively high value may cause visual errors due to conflicts between the image and text. But why do I do that? Because it sticks to the image as much as possible. When I do that, it doesn't veer off, you know, or make it too big or too small, you know, gets over creative on its own aspect. Where in this instance, hey, if you want to depict like yourself or your client or somebody you're working with, you want it to show that person as much as possible the way they are. And so that's why that's important. The camera moving in this instance, it's unavailable with an end frame as usual. And then you have your negative prompts. Now, if you look at it here, you have the opportunity to get inspirations on your prompts, right? So you have the opportunity to say the camera rotates around the subject, the camera zooms out, the camera zooms in. So they also give you a prompt dictionary here. And it's really cool. When you use it, I've gotten some really cool effects from it when I use it. So you have that opportunity just to help you out in case you feel you're lost here. Now, what we're going to do is then put the prompt in here of what we want. And I've created the prompt somewhere else. So I am just going to copy and paste it. And so here we go. I'll take that out. Oh. And then here I'm going to paste my prompt. And it says the image transitions from the guy walking and going to training where he is presenting and standing in front of a crowd. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just walk from here and go stand in front of a crowd and we'll see exactly how that works. Now, probably for another spot that's really, really important that you do not want to ignore, the negative prompts. I used to ignore this and then I would wonder why my videos just looked a little funky because the negative prompt sort of tells it what not to do, which is huge because with prompting now, you're telling it what to do and also what not to do, which gives you more specific results gives you more of an output of what you want. And so here, as you can see, it says list the type of content you don't want to see in the video examples, animation, blur, distortion, disfigurement, low quality, collage, grainy logos, abstract illusions, computer generated warped, you know, which I would think some of these won't just even be in there, right? Like the blur and the distortion disfigurement, like, do I need to actually put that in there? But I guess I do. And so that's something to consider. And so again, I have a classic prompt that I use here that I've used a lot in all my prompting and, and shout out to whoever provided this online. Cause I really got it on the internet, but here it is and we'll paste it here. So distortion, blurry, morphing, graining, inconsistency with the text, low quality artifacts, deformed, multiple appendages, grainy distorted, pixelated, anime-like, cartoonish, static, flat, out of focus on clear. And I do need to add on natural. That's a big one. And so you could take that to the bank. That's a huge negative prompt that you can copy and paste and use for your videos and also your images. I use it for my images too. All right. So here we are now. We have the two images. Again, we're under frames. We have our prompt, which says the image transitions from the guy walking and going to training where he's presenting and standing in front of the crowd, which is synonymous with the brand, you know, and then creativity settings a little high so that it's sticking to me so that the person looks like me and the image that I've provided. So it doesn't veer off and the negative prompts to make sure that we have a sharp, good looking image. And after that, what do we do? We simply click generate and here we are. As you can see, that's me walking and it transitions to me presenting based on both images that I provided. 
And I don't know how it actually thought about doing that because that's kind of cool. That's just like, hey, me, you know, hey, I'm looking cool, man. And this training has started. Let's get it going. And it just transitions to me. I have a turn back, you know, sort of like a cool turn back there, like, hey, and everybody's happy to see. So I think that's pretty cool because it does look really much like me, much like the picture that I submitted here to be able to create that. And so as you can see, this is so cool because I can use this now to say, hey, I will see you guys at the training. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in here. Boom, boom, boom. We are at the training, which you can add in as a video clip. And so it shows you how you can do reels stories, videos. I could turn this into a reel. I could turn this into a story, like see you there at the training. And it just is so cool without me being in this setting, whereas I'm still represented with my colors that I want, with my brand that I want, with doing exactly what my brand is aligned with. So I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's something you should go check out and start thinking of creative ways that you can merge images in this day and age where collabs are like huge. I mean, think of the possibilities that you can do. And of course, when you're done, it's quite simple. You can download here with a watermark or without a watermark. And I will tell you one thing that I did not cover here that you really need to see under the settings are the standard mode and the professional mode. For the standard mode, you are only using 20 credits. For the professional mode, you are using 35 credits. Also, if it's longer, it's going to use more credits. The duration, if it's longer than five seconds, it's going to use more credits. And the generating count is the amount of videos you want it to generate. So in this instance, I've only picked one. If I wanted it to generate two, I would have gone over here. Three, I would have gone over here, as you could see. And I can always choose the mode that I want. But in this instance, the professional mode, the cling model with end frame only supports the professional mode. So it would only be 35 credits. And so that's some of the things that you need to know with cling is that you get 20 credits in doing some stuff, but this where it's like limited and you know, you're doing a whole lot more where you can't do camera movements and all that stuff. 35 credits. So something I wanted to point out also that you should always factor in when you're doing stuff in cling. But when you're done, of course, you get the option to lip sync, which we'll cover some other time. You get the option to publish it, make it a favorite or to download it again, just like I said. And when you hit the three dots here, you can report or you could delete it. But that's how you can use this wonderful tool. And once you download it, it goes to your computer. And from there, you can edit it elsewhere or post it if you want. Hope this was helpful. If it is, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can continue to see helpful content that just makes your life easier. Till next time, take care.